This weekend, the Trump administration did something that's never, ever, 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 ever been done before. They released an application for a wiretap on Carter Page. Trump is claiming that it vindicates his attacks on the Mueller probe. He tweeted, quote, so we now find out that it was indeed the unverified and fake dirty dossier. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dirty Donald, that was paid for by crooked Hillary Clinton and the DNC that was knowingly and falsely submitted to FISA and which was responsible for starting the totally conflicted and discredited Mueller witch hunt. But that tweet, along with several others from this weekend, is full of lies. Imagine that. In fact, the application and three renewals for it undermine every tentpole of Trump's argument against the Mueller probe. Let's go through them. First, Trump's claim that the Carter Page documents confirm with little doubt that the Department of Justice and FBI failed to disclose that one of the sources of intelligence, Christopher Steele, was paid by Democrats. Now, the reality, the application clearly states that Steele was hired to conduct research regarding Donald Trump's ties to Russia and that the people who likely conducted it were we're likely looking for information that could be used to discredit Trump's campaign. That's on the application. Next, the claim Trump tweeted this weekend. This is so bad that they should be looking at the judges who signed off on this stuff. All right, Mr. President, we looked at the signatures of the four judges on the application and the renewals. They're all Republicans. And four finally, out of four? four out of four. Four out of four, Howland. Four, four, four out of four. Wow. And four finally, out of four. Trump's off repeated refrain no collusion. Well, get a load of this from the application itself. The FBI believes that the Russian government's efforts are being coordinated with Page and perhaps other individuals associated with Trump's campaign. Uh, Frank Figluzzi, I remember talking to senior Justice Department officials at the time that Devin Nunes was banging the pots and pans to get this out, who said, you know, if it weren't for the national security considerations and the desire um, and the mission to protect sources and methods, we should put this out. This, this shows, this showcases the incorruptible nature of the FISA court. And if Donald Trump knows what FISA stands for, I'll send him a Big Mac a day till the end of his presidency. But your thoughts about the fact that even amid the political attacks and even amid the unprecedented release of sensitive classified information, the FISA process stands up and holds up and rebukes the president the way his attacks and attack dogs never could. Nicole, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually pleased that this release occurred. And boy, I, I cringe even as I say that, but it clearly shows that the system worked here. It is a strong affidavit, and the renewals are even stronger as you see them growing in size each time they're renewed and each judge signing off on them. And it refutes everything that Devin Nunes has been saying about the dossier being the majority of the probable cause or the failure to tell the judges that there are issues with Christopher Steele. All of that's been refuted. I can't imagine how Devin Nunes can look in a camera and speak that he's, he's vindicated today, but he's doing it anyway. And it does also lay bare the case for collusion. We know there was collusion. It was between the Russian government and Carter Page. Don't take the deep state's word for it. Take Carter Page's word for it. Yeah, Carter Page, who referred to himself at one point as an, an advisor to the advisor, Kremlin. Right? Advisor to the Kremlin. Doesn't get much more secret agent than that. Um, I think this has been a useful exercise seeing this memo. It was pretty clear back when, in February, when the two versions, or this application, when the two versions of the memo was released, the Democratic version and the Republican version, who was telling the truth about what the, the warrant application said and who wasn't, to anyone that was really paying attention. But now anyone can go and look at this application and see that Devin Nunes was just flat out lying. The FBI told the court very clearly that it was someone who wanted, likely wanted to discredit Donald Trump's campaign who was spreading this information. And I say it's a useful exercise because we've seen the president lie to the American people a lot. Why, does, we, why is Devin Nunes lying to the American people and why doesn't Paul Ryan do anything? Well, that's what I mean about the useful exercise. We can see conservative writers, member of, members of Congress, who now can look at this application and know and see the, have the American people look at it and know that they are flat out lying about what it says. And the only thing, the only reason they would be doing it is to protect Donald Trump. Steve Schmidt, why is Devin Nunes getting away with lying to the American people about the FBI? Why is the Republican Party now for smearing the FBI with lies? Because Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, is allowing it to happen. Full stop, period. Why? He is the weakest, most spineless speaker that the country has ever seen. For whatever reason, whatever malfunction has occurred in Paul Ryan's brain, he has forgotten that his oath is to the Constitution of the United States, that the speakership is a trust. 
He is the third in line to the office of President of the United States, and he sits at the dais of the People's House under the Capitol Dome that Abraham Lincoln insisted be constructed during Civil War so that government of the people, by the people, for the people, reconsecrated, would have a place to gather and to meet. The smallness of Paul Ryan for this big moment in time can't be overstated. And what he's allowing Devin Nunez to do, beyond degrading the Intelligence Committee, destroying its functionality, is doing extreme harm to the country. And it is in his power to stop it five minutes ago, as it is in his power to stop it five minutes from now. And hopefully, he will redeem himself on some date at some hour that is yet certain. We'll be watching, Helen. There's a little coda on here. You know, he might not be getting away with it now. Here's why. You know how much Devin Nunes won re-election by in 2016? Hmm. 35 points. You know how much Devin Nunes is ahead of his challenger by right now, according to the most recent polling? Eight. He's under 50 percent, and he's a Republican incumbent chairman of the House committee. He's in danger right now, and he could lose his seat over all of this. And with all his right. hometown hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.